Hey folks, welcome back to the Ultimate Guide to Shutter Speed. I'm David Molnar, your photography mentor. Now in this lesson, we're gonna be talking about how shutter speed affects exposure, and I might even give you a free lesson from my course that's called Master Your Camera. How does shutter speed affect exposure? Well, what is exposure? Exposure, simply put, is the brightness of an image. Now, here's another question for you. What is a correct exposure versus an incorrect exposure? Well, this answer to this question is actually a bit subjective because a correct exposure is an image that's not too bright or not too dark based on what the photographer thinks it should be. Let me show you a few examples. In this image right here, we have my cute pregnant little wife and two of my sons um, completely silhouetted where the sky is stunning and great detail, but the figures in the foreground are completely silhouetted. Now, some of you guys might think this image is too dark, but I disagree. I was the photographer and this image is exactly the brightness that I intended it to be. Okay, so let me show you another example, all right? In this image, the image is super bright, all right? And, and you know, full disclosure, I didn't actually take this image because it's actually of me and my newborn son, okay? But this image, we have the light flowing in the background. It's a bit overexposed, a bit too bright from some people's perspectives, but this was exactly the, um, the lighting, the brightness that my wife, who took this image, intended it to be. This is the feeling that she wanted to convey. So both of these images are correct because they are exactly what the photographer, which was me and my wife, intended the brightnesses or the exposures of these images to be. So what is a correct exposure? It's an image that's not too dark or not too bright based on what the photographer thinks it should be. So how does that relate to shutter speed? Well, simply put, with shutter speed, you can control the brightness of an image. Shutter speed is one of the three factors that goes into determining how bright or how dark an image can be. So I have an entire course that teaches you all about this. It's called Master Your Camera. And what I wanna do is show you a real lesson from that course right now, because I think it'll do a great job of explaining this concept. So let's talk about you know, the different ways that you can get a correct exposure and kind of talk a little bit about you know, what a correct exposure is. So what's really amazing, this is an example I like to use, a correct exposure is like a glass of water, okay? A full glass of water. None of you negative people with glass half empty stuff, right? This is a full glass of water. Now what's interesting is just you know, according to what we were just saying, you know, I'm saying this is a, glass, a full glass of water, and you might say, well, actually, I like to fill my glasses up here, right? Because that's how you interpret a full glass. And some of you guys who live too dangerously, probably, could fill your glass all the way up to the brim. That's the way that you live life, you know? Like, that's cool, like, that, that's fine if that's the way you do things. Either way, right? Like, a full glass of water could be here, 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 whatever. But let's just agree right now to, to disagree or agree or whatever way that we should agree to agree, that this is a full glass of water, okay? You might think it's here or here, but let's just say this is a full glass of water. So the interesting thing is that you can create, you can fill up a glass of water in lots and lots of different ways. For example, let's go ahead and pour this glass out. Do you see the way I poured that? It's pretty incredible. I'm just, just saying, I practice that a whole lot. All right, so, there is multiple combinations, infinite probably combinations of ways that you could fill up a glass of water. But let's look at example one. I'm gonna open up this faucet all the way to full blast, all right? Full blast. And it's gonna fill up this glass of water as fast as freaking possible, right? And as long as I shut it off at the appropriate moment, we now have a full glass of water. Look at that, there's a full glass of water there, right? We filled that up really as fast as that faucet could possibly fill it up, right? We filled up the glass of water fast. Would you agree? Okay, cool. Um, so let's take a look at glass number two. We, we may, let's call this glass A and we'll call this glass B, cool? We could create a slow trickle of water, maybe not even that much, right? Just a slow little trickle, okay? This is a slow trickle. The other glass would have already been full by now, right? Right? Hey. While we're waiting, I've got, an, I've got a joke for you. What's Bruce Lee's favorite drink? Water! 
Okay, sorry. All right, so back here. We're just waiting for this. We're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. It's taking forever. Maybe we could even fast forward this part. I don't even know. But it's taking a long time to fill up this glass of water. A really long time. Getting kind of, getting kind of thirsty here. Look at that. We have a full glass of water. Isn't that crazy? This one splashed a little bit more and maybe they're not perfect, but they're pretty close, right? So we have glass of water A and we have glass of water B and they are both full glasses of water. You guys might be thinking like, okay, great, that, yeah, you filled up glasses of water like two different ways. But this is exactly the way that like, you know, a correct exposure is, is just like a full glass of water, okay? And you can fill up a glass of water in multiple different ways. Those are two extreme examples. We filled up the glass A really fast, we filled up glass B really slow. Well, it's the exact same way when you're letting light come in through your lens in your camera, right? And exposing your sensor, right? You can fill up a correct exposure, like a glass of water, in an infinite combinations of fast or slow. And so the way it works is when we're blasting water like this, What's actually happening is, is that your faucet is actually allowing a large size hole, you know, to be open. And so what's happening is, because you have a large size hole, more water is flowing through the faucet, right? So it's a larger size hole, water is flowing through that faucet faster, therefore it doesn't take as much time. This might seem obvious, like, and so good, like hopefully it's feeling really obvious to you. And so what happens if you make that faucet, if you make that hole in your faucet smaller, well, it does a very, very slow trickle, right? A very slow trickle of light and it takes a much, or, sorry, of water and it takes a much, much longer duration or amount of time to fill up that glass. But at the end of the day, right, both glass A and glass B are both full. Well, when you're trying to get a correct exposure, which is relevant to what you think, if your interpretation of what a correct exposure should be, right? You can fill up glass A or glass B, or you can fill up a glass of water in multiple different ways. So when you're creating a, when you're trying to take a picture and get a correct exposure, which is not too bright and not too dark based on what you want it to be, you could, you could take that picture, you could fill up that exposure with light through the hole that's in your lens, right? You could fill up that exposure like a glass of water, fast or slow or anywhere in between. Right? So the way that a camera works is you have a hole, okay? And we're gonna talk about all about these, you know, these, these you know, fancy terms like aperture, shutter speed, ISO, depth of field, all this stuff, right? But right now, I just want you to understand this basic concept that right now, there's a hole in your lens, okay? And that hole is actually, you know, different, you can make it different sizes. You can make it really small or really large, okay? That's actually technically called aperture. We're gonna talk about that extensively in, in just a little bit, right? But if you have a large size hole, then you do not need as much time to fill up your exposure with light. So you can do a shorter duration of time, right? And as long as you, you know, do, turn off the time at the appropriate moment, you're gonna have a correct exposure. And inversely, if you have a small hole, right, then you're gonna need a lot of time because you have a small hole, not as much light is coming through your lens, exposing the sensor that's in the background, right? So you're going to need more time for that. Hope you enjoyed that free lesson from my Master Your Camera course. In the next lesson, we're going to be talking about something that confuses some people, okay? We're going to be talking about fractions with shutter speed. I hope to make it half as confusing as it has to be for you. I'll see you then.